Well, what's going on guys? I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Welcome back to another episode of Lawn Fires, where the fires are hot, the lawns are green, and the questions are engaging. Welcome back to another episode of Lawn Fires. For those of you guys who are new here, basically what this is, it's a weekly live show that I do every Friday, 6 p.m., Central Daylight Savings Time. Obviously, tonight we're 30 minutes late, but that's what happens sometimes when life gets in the way. But anyway, uh, for the most part, we're here every Friday, 6 p.m., uh, Central Daylight Savings Time. Probably be Central Standard once we go back an hour here. But anyway, what it is, is it's an hour-long show that I do weekly on Friday nights where I sit down and I answer all of your most frequently asked questions live in real time as they come in, in the chat fireside now real quick let me go ahead and walk you through the process for those who are new here so all you got to do is here let me unpause that so when you go into your video you're going to see a couple of icons here now, let me uh, get a little closer here so when you when you do your video you got uh couple different icons under there you want the one that says live chat if you click that then that'll give you this guy right here and then you could you know press that little enter bar right there and then you can leave a comment question whatever and I'll respond to you as soon as I can so once again sorry for the delay you guys know that I've been experimenting with ways to uh, up the quality of the show uh, one of them being I had an audio guy audio visual guy here last week um, we used some capture software, and obviously that brought us back an hour. But I thought in the end it turned it out. It turned out way better. The quality was just awesome. And we were going to do it again tonight, but something came up last minute, and because of that, he couldn't get back here. So maybe, maybe he'll be back here next weekend. But you know, this stuff happens. So the only way to get through it is to power through it. Am I right? So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into the bread and butter of the show, and that is going to be the questions. Once again, if you follow the directions I gave you, uh, for those who are new here, you type in questions, I'll answer them as soon as I can. Um, keep in mind, I may not always go in chronological order when you ask a question. You know, some, sometimes a question might pop out to me and I might answer it, and I just I go along with it. So with all that being said, let's get into the questions. All right. Matt, what's up, brother? Mike Haddad, how are you doing? Good evening, brother. Um, DJ, I will stay warm. Thank you, and I hope everybody else does, too. It's been a very odd couple of days here. Uh, Halloween, we got freaking snowed out, but me and one of my buddies, we went out, powered through it, got some candy. Good time. And then uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah. Happy Friday, RVA. How you doing, brother? Shout out to Mark in Canton, Connecticut. Nice, brother. Welcome. Chase Crawford, how you doing? Kenny Cooper, how you doing? Sandman, how you doing? It's Jake, by the way, not Jack. Um, <laughs> Lawn Punk, welcome to the show. I think you... S I don't think I've seen your name on here before. If not, welcome, brother. Welcome to the show. Uh, Kenny Cooper, Mike, I'm good. How about you? Cold, we got four inches of snow yesterday. Um, Mike Haddad cold here as well some snow however we had 70 miles an hour winds last night lots of destruction my cadet um, I know that wasn't for me directly but I can relate to you as I do live in the Midwest we had a lot of snow last night and then the week before that we had crazy wind storms coming through which did a lot of debt which destroyed a lot so yeah you growing a mustache or what buddy oh yeah by the way I actually shot my uh, my Mo Movember uh, promo today. That's going to be coming out in this Monday's video, so stay tuned for that. And I don't know how well you guys can see it, but uh, I didn't shave for like two weeks. I finally shaved today, but I left my little fuzz stash. I call it a fuzz stash because I don't really have thick facial hair, but uh, can you see it? No, let me come up to the camera. I don't know how well this lighting is going to show up, but They kind of see something, but yeah. Day one. Wait till we get to day 30. So yeah, that. And I have two more people I got to call out. That'll be coming out on Monday. Stay tuned. Um, right, here we go. You are amazing. I watch every video, Chase. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, Scott O'Hara, good evening. How you doing? Welcome to the show. Um... 
I'm doing it tonight or first thing tomorrow. Nice. Hey Jake, it's been cool to see you grow since your very young, since your very younger days with LCN. Yeah, man, it's been quite a journey. Put some RGS on that. You know what? I will. In fact, maybe for a maybe for a little fun, we'll probably just do it. Why not? Uh, you'll get there. <laughs> I will. You <laughs> I smudged it. Yeah, like I touched it. Oh no, I ruined it. Got some questions. Listen, we got some questions that gotta come in. Let me fill the time. Fix the fire. Log on there. Some bark, why not? Oh, that light. Okay, let's see what came in while I was gone. I just had a tree taken out and did some substantial lawn leveling. I have three to four areas that have a few inches of topsoil added. What process should I follow since I have to seed in the spring now? Okay, DJ, this is a really good question. So you actually have a couple of options here. The first one is just to just straight up seed. Once you get out of the winter, go ahead and seed, right? Or you can seed and put down a pre-emergent for crabgrass. Now, as I've talked about before, you kind of have to make a decision between the two. But at the same time, there are alternatives out there where you can actually put down your pre-emergent synergistically with the seeding. And that, and that brings me to a good old product that I like to call Tenacity. So what Tenacity is, it's a pre-emergent, post-emergent herbicide that you can apply to your newly seeded lawn that will, that will aid in preventing those weeds from coming up. Yeah. Close app. Sorry, message popped up on the phone. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, with uh, Tenacity, it contains active ingredient metzotrione, and because of that, um, the way it works is it's actually going to prevent the weeds from coming up by disrupting their cell, the way they uh, develop cells, you know, cell division, it's going to disrupt that. But it's going to do it without negatively affecting your turf, which is a common problem with pre-emergent herbicides like prodiamine and dithiapyr. But what I would recommend to you because of that, but hang on, sorry I lost myself there. But the one thing that you do run into with tenacity is the fact that it doesn't really have that much of a residual. In fact, I believe it's about six weeks at most. Don't, don't take my word for that, but that's what I've been hearing a lot. You only get about six weeks and because of that, if you want to get a good coverage all throughout the season, especially if you got a really bad progress problem, that means that you have to keep applying it to your lawn every six weeks, right? And not everybody's gonna wanna do that. So this is where I would encourage you to take a look at your lawn, assess the situation and be like, okay, if I have, if I have a fairly thick stand of turf and I don't have to do any seeding, then go ahead and put down your pre-emergent, which is highly recommended in the spring anyway. You could save the seed for the fall. And then once fall time comes around, that's when you could do your seed as you, that's when you could do your seed. You can allow the grass to overwinter and grow bigger and stronger over the winter when we stock it up with nitrogen for that spring push. So anyway, back to what you were saying here, what I recommend to you is one of those two. You can either just seed, keep it simple, or you can add in the mezzotrion tenacity, which I don't think you'll have to do if you don't have that much of a problem anyway. So I would just encourage you to seed and water it every day, especially on the days where it doesn't rain. Okay, you want to make sure, especially as those temperatures are trending up, that you're compensating and keeping that ground wet. As I talked about, the way you do that is you water three times a day, 6, 12, 3, 6 a.m., noon, 3 p.m. You want to do that for at least, at most, 20 minutes. Because the idea is you want to keep the ground wet so that that seed has something to grow into as the days go on. If you let it get dry, it's obviously going to have a negative effect. Google Play keeps stopping.
So I hope I was able to uh, help you out there. <laughs> Maybe some humic on the stash. Scott Mobile, you know what? You might be right. Got to stimulate some roots up here. Get some, uh, maybe put some aerate on there. Put some aerate on there too so we can get some more uh, air, water, and nutrient penetration to uh, make room for those roots. Uh, getting my brand new professional Christmas lights prepped tonight. Grant, that's awesome, dude. You know, I've actually, when I was at GIE, I saw a couple of vendors, took a couple of cards. Looking to maybe make a couple of calls here because I'm looking to up my Christmas like, come on. Close the app. Just close it. Close it. That's why it's nice to have a, an assistant. Anyway, we'll power through it. But yeah, Grant Lucan, that's awesome. In fact, if you can, send me some pictures on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'd love to see them. Tag me in there. Uh, especially on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Jake the One Kid, no capitals, no spaces. Tag me on there, man. I'd love to see pictures of the finished product. Um, X Harper, awesome. Uh, Jake, can I move a flowering shrub in December? Kurt Weatherby, what kind of shrub is it? And if I'm going to be honest with you too, I've never run into this situation. As you can see, I have no shrubs whatsoever in my own landscape so i'm not a big expert on that but if you tell me the type of shrub and what you're trying to do exactly then maybe maybe you can email me and we can follow up at some point next week or into next weekend um because i got some friends that can help you so because i got some friends that can help you i can also do a little more research and follow up so anyway yeah i'll leave my email here if you want to email me kurt right down here Okay. Chase, that's awesome, man. I'm proud of you. Got your first job because of me. That's pretty awesome. Um, Benjamin Short Reed, you're my favorite YouTuber. Appreciate it, man. Glad I can, glad I can entertain you. Uh, Jake, there are a lot of us new to the lawn care community, and in YouTube. Any advice for us newbies? Okay, this is a great question. And you know what? This is where I'm going to go all Gary Vaynerchuk on you. Just create content. That's it. Create content. Make videos of what you're doing. And put them out on a consistent basis. If you want to go daily, go daily. If you want to go weekly, which I personally recommend because it won't be that much strain on your end to be creative, I would just do weekly. So one video a week, that's what I would do. And then on top of that, I would definitely build a presence on Instagram, post at least one, one picture a day of what's going on in your lawn, your life, whatever, right? Get a good presence on social media going. That's my advice to you. So I know I keep clapping, but it's how I transition. Anyway, when you do that, just get on as many social media platforms as you can. Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter, all of that. Get on there and start sharing. Like, share pictures on Twitter of what you're dealing with at the moment, right? Especially in your business. I think that would be awesome. Snapchat would be a great way to tell stories. Instagram stories as well, right? And then on Instagram, you could share, like, some cool pictures that you took throughout the day of your work. Same thing with Facebook. You could do that, too. You can also share videos from YouTube on your Facebook page. You can do the same on Instagram. You can make Instagram TVs, right? There's so much that I could say. All... All it boils down to is just get a presence out there and commit to it, right? But don't overdo it. Don't overcommit yourself to a point where, where you get tired of it, right? Like if you start posting videos every day and you have the commitment and energy to do that, then kudos to you. But if you don't, don't burn yourself out. Stick to one video a week, but in between, you can post pictures every day on all those platforms. So I hope I helped you there, Mike. <laughs> I hope I helped you there. I know I went on a little bit of a rant, but again, just bringing out my inner Gary Vaynerchuk because this is something I'm very passionate about, right? In fact, YouTube is not really something to overthink, nor, nor is getting on social media in general, let alone just YouTube, right? Get on social media, get a presence, start creating, stop overthinking. That's as Gary Vaynerchuk would say.
Yeah, Sam, and he says make 100 plus. I wouldn't expect you to do that, especially if you're a solo guy. Just make at least one post a day of what's going on. Jake, you and LCN uh, find anything cheap to put down as a winterizer, but I have some Carbon X left over. Should I put that down or save that for next year and buy something cheaper for winter? Jason Laporte, put the Carbon X down. It's only going to help. Plus, as we've mentioned in past videos, you get a combination there of both fast and slow release, and because of that, you're, you're possibly going to get a nice color pop right now if you still have any green holding on. And on top of that, you're also going to get some nitrogen deep down into the soil that's going to remain in the root system over winter. And then once we get to springtime, your lawn is going to be the greenest on the block before anybody else. So definitely put the Carbon X down. It's only going to help. How do I get more people to hire me? Uh, Chase Crawford, you know, you're. I'd love to help you, but I don't think I can, man, because... You're asking, you're asking the, the boss here. You're asking the guy that hires people. So I don't, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't hire that many people. Nice, brother. Good info. Obsessed with lawns and odds. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Hey, Jake, what would be the ideal height for grass in preparation for the winter? I am in the Northeast. Andre, I've actually talked about this in previous live streams where I recommend especially if you're mowing a fine, a fine, what's the word for it? Fine, flexible grass like um, Kentucky bluegrass or perennial rye that just tends to, you know, bend around very easily, very soft on the feet. Uh, the ideal height for the last cut of the year is going to be two and a half. Now, I assume that since we're still in the fall right now and you're still getting some growth because it has been an odd year. I mean, I know it snowed yesterday by us, but... Within a couple of days, it's literally going to be back in the 40s and 50s. I just know it because I've been around for so long watching, right? So definitely continue cutting at three inches. And then once you get to that last cut when the lawn stops growing completely, which will probably be around Thanksgiving, depending on where you're at. It could be right now, right? The lawn stops growing completely. You're starting to notice temperatures dipping below into the 40s. And at that point, that's when you want to think about doing your last cut. So for that, the height of cut I'd recommend would be about two and a half inches. So the idea being, is, as I've talked about in my first cut of the year video, that you slowly want to inch up as you go into the summer. Start at two and a half, and then once you get into spring, you go to three. And then once you enter into summer, that's when you want to raise it up to three and a half. And then as we go into fall, you're going to do the same thing, but the opposite way. So you're at three and a half. Now your goal is to get down to two and a half through the fall and into the winter. Now, real quick, one more thing I do want to expand on while I'm, while I'm on this is the fact that I am going to be doing a video all about this coming soon, right? I've done a video on the first cut explaining it. I'm also going to do it on the second cut. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I got lost there. If you have tall fescue, which is more of a rigid grass type, which means it's a little harder on the feet, and it's more of a solid crown, which means it's not easy to lay over, then I just recommend a half inch taller. As I've talked about before, if you have fescue, start off the year with three inches and then slowly inch up to four as you go into the summer. And it's the opposite as you go into the fall, four inches, and then work your way down to three inches by the time you get to the last cut of the season. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any more questions, leave them here and I'll answer them. That said, would you mind subscribing? Thanks for the tips. Love your rants. Mike Haddad, I will gladly do so once this, was, once this is over and I can actually subscribe to you without messing up the whole stream. But yeah, I'll subscribe to you, man. I'll, I'll support your endeavors. Uh, Matt Gordon, what's up? Welcome to the show. For the, if you're new here, oh wait, Matt Gordon's a regular. You know how it works here. If you ask a question, I'll answer it. Bag or recycle the two tons of leaves I have on the yard after the windstorm. Um, well, Andre, it really depends on the severity of the situation. In fact, I actually post it all over uh, Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, uh, stories, all that. I talked about leaves on the lawn. I mentioned, that if, I mentioned that you have two options. Number one, you can bag them up, or number two, you can mulch them down. So the way you determine which, which route you're going to go depends on the severity of the leaves. If you have like a very thin, consistent cover uh, of leaves on the lawn that you know your mower will mulch down into very fine um, into very fine fragments, then by all means, go ahead and mulch it. 
But if you have like a really, really bad infestation of leaves to the point where they're covering your lawn completely and you've got like a good inch or so on there, then I wouldn't even bother mulching that. That's going to get really messy real quick. And that's where I'd encourage you to either A, blow the leaves off the lawn, maybe rake them up, um, save them for your next forest fire, if you, forest fire, your next uh, bonfire if you, live, if you live in an unincorporated area, or maybe stack them up for your fire pit somewhere, or maybe on the side of your house, whatever you want to do. Um, the idea being is that if you, have, if you have a really severe pile of them, then you don't want to mess around with mulching. You're going to want to get those out of there, off there by A, uh, mulching, as I mentioned, or B, if it's really bad, uh, definitely get out there with your rake or your leaf blower and then rake it all up into a tarp and dispose of it somewhere. Or, like I said, save it for your next bonfire if you live in an unincorporated area, which I have plenty of experience with. Scott Moville, Chase, congratulations. Good luck. Keep after it. It's awesome. Um, I'm burning up down here. It's 83. What's up, Jake? Um, SFL, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? Um, I wish it was 83 here. It's the total opposite. That's why I'm back in the house again with fires. Oh, by the way, real quick, let me, uh, get away. Chase Crawford, what kind of music do you like? This is a good question. I get this a lot. So, based on my videos and my music interests outside of lawn care, I'd say my favorite type of music is two things. Hip-hop, rap, no, hip-hop and rap and jazz. And also anything that mixes the two genres together, which is what I use in my YouTube videos for my music primarily. It just, it adds this like extra, I don't know, there are two genres that I really like. When you put them together, it just sounds awesome. Okay, where are we at with the chat now? We're moving through, man. Show my buddy Mike some love here. Everyone check out Mike's channel. He's up and coming. Mike and Dad's Lawn Addictions. Awesome, brother. I love... That's so why I love this community. We've got a lot of camaraderie and a lot of support in here. I love it. Um, all right, let's keep going. Um, is it too late to fertilize in November? Just had some snow in Chicago. Uh, Sal, here's what I'd recommend for you. So I'm in the same boat right now. I'm having the same dilemma myself because you'll hear my video coming out Monday that I actually recommend that you continue fertilizing with nitrogen every four weeks all the way up till Thanksgiving at the latest. But because of the, the weather twist this year and the fact that it snowed unusually earlier, early, I don't even know if that's going to let up or not. Like I told, I was mentioning earlier how that's typical, but honestly with the way the weather is, you just never know. So if you have snow and it's sticking around for a while, or even, or even worse, if the snow melts and the temperatures continue to stay cool, then just go ahead and call it good for the season and know that you're going to get a nice green, especially if you've been stocking the lawn up with nitrogen in advance uh, before the snow. So play it by ear, check your soil temperatures, make sure that they're at least in the 40s and they're still soft and, you know, pliable, which they're still soft and pliable. It's not frozen, right? 
the crowns aren't brittle, all that stuff. Make sure that the ground is soft after the snow melts and you're getting warm temperatures. If not, if you're staying cool, I wouldn't mess with it. Just call it quits for the rest of the year. You should be fine. Ooh, Connor. I'm up for the challenge. I have two questions for Jacob. What did you eat for dinner, or what was the last thing you ate? And two, did it taste good to you? Um, Connor, what did I eat for dinner? Buffalo Wild Wings. I had the barbecue wings, and how did they taste? Freaking delicious. <sighs> I got to eat now. I just went to the dentist, man. I got... That's another thing. I've been comp contemplating on whether or not I should eat more because I went to the dentist, and I got two existing cavities and one so I got here's the point I gotta go I brush my teeth right I do all that but just because of the natural aging of my teeth I got a cavity in one of them and this one if I don't take care of it ASAP I'm possibly gonna have to get a root canal and I'm <sighs> don't want to do that anyway sorry to drop that on you guys it's just it's been eating away at me, no pun intended, eating away at me because I just, they told me those news. I was like, what? Anyway, let me keep going through here. Pool man, Jake, just got, just bought a new uh, mower to me, a uh, lock triplex set to cut at two inches. I'm real mowing this weekend. Awesome, dude. Let me know how it goes. Um, Mike Haddad, uh, thank you for the videos. Hope because of you. Yeah, man, I have to say the same. Connor, he's a natural. something. I'm starving. I had dinner a couple hours ago, but it wasn't enough. <sighs> There's also that other new guy with the big yard and the big tools to take care of it. His name is spelled exactly like mine. Um, he's not great yet, but getting there. Come on, Kenny. Don't say that. I will give you one piece of advice, Kenny. You might want to come up with a name that's lawn care related. Or like everything I told you, just keep putting pictures out there. Post pictures. But what I would encourage you to do is maybe come up with something like uh, Kenny's Lawn Management or something, right? Anything along the lines of lawn care, and then more people will find you. I'm not, not, di I'm not dousing you or anything. I'm not breaking you. I'm just saying. Come up with something lawn care, more people will find you. <clears throat> Chase, what's your favorite song? Oh, man. What do I say? I got a lot of favorite songs. It's hard to pick one. SFL, couldn't find any Malorganite, so I bought Sunnyland instead. Smells like horse crap. My wife is freaking out. We sit on the patio at night. I love it. Neighbors also ask me where the horses are. Tell them they're in the bag, man. They're in the bag. And they're about to provide all that nutrient value to your grass. <clears throat> Have you noticed pre-emergence uh, slowing top growth on your lawn? Maybe just me, but it looks like it does. Sean McLaughlin, I have a question. Are you warm or cool season? And if so, what is the, what are the temperatures like for you? Because I can probably, rest assured, I can probably tell you that you're misconstruing something. Because I'm having the same, I'm in the same boat right now if we live in the same type of area. What's up, Chris? How you doing? Uncle Tattoo, that's my uncle in there. Uh, how you doing, man? Oh, yeah, by the way, I've been meaning to ask you. I've been texting you all day. Uh, did you manage to shut your uh, spigots off? Or at least get the... At least turn the spring, at least turn the sprinklers off so that th those don't freeze. Did you do that? I still got to come over there and uh, winterize your lawn once we get a little warmer here. But uh, let me know, man. I want to make sure that, that we get that stuff away. You know, we spent a lot of money on that irrigation system, like 200 bucks. Eh, Connor, you know what? It's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that bad. They just said that I gotta get back within three weeks and have the uh, have the filling done. Any later, any later than six months, and I'm gonna have a problem. So rest assured, I can still eat. I'm just gonna have to start being a little more responsible 
drinking more water, eating less candy, which is hard because I went trick-or-treating last night and I got a crap ton of it sitting in my room. I wasn't prepared for bad news today. Hmm. What should be my lawn care name? Chase? That's something you have to figure out, man. I wish I could help you. But that... That takes some serious thought. I, I didn't just go... Listen, when I started my channel, I didn't just go up to somebody and say, Hey, what should my channel name be? I, I literally created a list of what I thought was good, and then came to a final decision. That's how Jake the Lawn Kid came to be. Plus, I live next to Alan. He used to call me that a lot, so that, that inspired it greatly. Uh, before the Toro 3100B... Uh, there was a lock suggest any of you lawn, uh, look it up, uh, would love some lawnmower history. Yeah, pool man. Never used a real mower before, so I don't know if I could help you there, but anybody in the chat, if you're willing to pitch in, more than welcome to. I've been thinking about a channel name, but I want to do some DIY stuff over the winter. Jason G is doing okay in this community, and he posts a lot of different stuff. Okay, that's pretty, that's pretty smart. Been done. All right, cool. Just wanted to make sure those lines didn't freeze. What soil temperature should I be putting down next products on Turf Type 12 Fescue? I've been putting down 5 ounces of Green Punch weekly and alternating Humic and RGS at 3 ounces weekly. Okay, so Sandman, there's really no set uh, time that you have to stop. It more It really depends on the climate. So if you're having really warm temperatures going into winter, then by all means, keep putting it on the lawn because you might not be releasing that nitrogen now if the temperatures are cooler, but as I mentioned before, you're stocking the lawn up for next season to give you that nice growth push going into the spring. Aiden, what's up, brother? Hey, man, sorry about the inconvenience tonight. I told you my, uh, I don't know if I told you or if you heard, but my, uh, my audio-visual tech couldn't make it tonight, and because of that, I had to... Uh, <clears throat> I had to change things up, create a new event, so I ended up starting 30 minutes later. But, uh, yeah, we're here. We're good until 7.30. So, yeah, if you want to aid me in leaving links, man, Aiden, aid me. Appreciate it. What should be my business name? Man, I wish I could help you. I, I just don't know. You gotta, you gotta, You got to go through a list of names and figure out what works. I know that pre-emergence stops cell growth and mature roots. It may just be the temp in the season, just like he said. I live up in, Ohio, I am in Ohio, up by the lake east of Cleveland. Um, okay. So I'm going to take it that Sean here is having the same uh, climactic, it's a new word I came up with, climactic issues that I'm having. Uh, we had a really heavy snow yesterday, and because of that, it's really wreaking havoc on things. But here's what I would say to you. Let me really think, think this through. So, what did he ask us about? I wouldn't, I wouldn't go that far to assume that the pre-emergence are slowing down the growth because it's honestly not the case. Because if you're getting cooler and the days are getting shorter, less photosynthesis is happening, and because of that, your lawn is not growing as vigorously. I have the same thing happening with my lawn, and I didn't even put a pre-emergent on it. I freaking seeded it. So you would think the lawn would normally be growing more thicker and more vigorous than ever before. But because of the climate and the shorter days, it really becomes a challenge. So I, I, I wouldn't say that it's the pre-emergent. I mean, you might be onto something here, but I wouldn't assume that far because it's honestly natural for the grass's growth to slow down right now because the temperatures are getting cooler and the days are getting shorter. Think of it like when the leaves fall off the trees. Why do the leaves fall off the trees? Well, for one, less direct sunlight, right? So they change color. There's less chlorophyll in there. The chlorophyll pig pigments break up. Leaves change color. They fall off the trees. In fact, I actually have an interesting observation I made with this that you'll hear about in an upcoming video uh, next week. Not this Monday, but next Monday. Stay tuned. <laughs> Connor, I love when he asks me these questions. Jake. If you had to narrow down the single most important thing you've learned through your 18 years on the earth, what would it be? It's a tough one, man. I've learned a lot of valuable stuff. But I guess the one thing would be 
if you have an opportunity, take advantage of it. Because there were so many times, and there still are to this day, because I'm a very introverted person. I get anxious when I have to go up and approach people. But some, I'm getting better at it. But there's been so many opportunities in my life where I probably could have had something awesome, but never wanted to see it through because I was so anxious all the time, right? And I, it's the same way when I meet you guys in person. Like, it's like, oh my God, what do I say? I don't know what to do here. I have all these people that watch me and say they love me. I don't want to come off as, you know, too crazy or too, you know, distant or like I want nothing to do with you, that type of thing, right? So I guess my biggest thing would be if you see an opportunity, take a breath, count down from three, and go for it. That's what I've learned. Mm. Sean, you must be near me. I'm just east of Erie. Mm, so you're close. You're welcome, Sean. What's up, Jake? Coming in from St. John. This weather is crazy. Diamond turf, I couldn't agree with you anymore. Trick-or-treating was brutal last night. Me and a friend from high school went out, just having some fun. Who cares how old we are, right? It's freaking 40-year-old men out there trick-or-treating, too. Plus, it's a good opportunity for me to go around and hand out some business cards to some prospects, right? Am I right? And on top of that, I had a couple of... <laughs> I had like 10 of my customers invite me back over. It's one guy having a bonfire in his garage. His name is Tony. I used to cut this guy's lawn all the time. He was like, hey, man, after you're done, come on over. I got steaks on the grill, everything. I'm like, heck yeah, man, I'll be back. Did it. It was fun. <laughs> Love that answer. Thanks. You're welcome, Connor. I miss the extended versions of Lawn Fire. David Williams, I do too. But, just like everyone else, I got a life to live. I got stuff to accomplish. I got goals to meet. Deadlines too. And because of that, sometimes I got to sacrifice one thing to improve the quality of another thing. Like my grades in school. Especially after GIE. They went... And that's not from neglect. That's just what happens. You go out of town for a week and things get out of hand, right? So I've been spending these last couple of weeks catching up on that. And on top of that, I've been really trying to get videos done before Sunday because the biggest problem I ran into, and I'm sure you guys experience this too, is you'll you'll start making a video, right? And you'll wait until like the very last night to start editing it. You'll spend seven hours on it. And it turns out good, but not as good as it would have been if you would have split the hours up into nights. Like maybe an hour a night to tweak this, an hour a night to tweak that, an hour a night to, to add the final touches to make it perfect. I've been implementing that a lot, <clears throat> especially Friday night after uh, lawn fires and I do it. My quality has gone up a lot, so I'm impressed. Take advantage of being a young kid. People love to help out a young entrepreneur, but you need to do the best job possible. Word of mouth is best when you're young and starting out. That's right, especially when you have a ton of networks in the neighborhood, man. Plenty of opportunity out there. Like when you know a ton of people in the neighborhood already, they can also put in a good word for you. Like me being a naturally introverted person, it's hard, it's hard for me to approach people. But when I have people that recommend me to people, it keeps me growing. I start my first lawn tomorrow, going to time-lapse it. Uh, do have a mower, yet need more work to make some money. That's right, man. Just remember one thing. When you start, take care of your equipment, it'll take care of you. Those are your money, those are your money makers, pal. Got to keep them in tip-top shape. <laughs> That's why I like you. That's right, man. What's up, my lawn brother? Oh, I've been meaning to tell you guys. A lot of you have been asking me, Jake, what happened to your truck? What happened to the blue bourbon? Well, I'm happy to tell you, she's coming back tomorrow. She's coming back, and I am going to start driving it. I finally got my driver's license. 
18 years old. I, it's probably one of my biggest accomplishments. Um, that and being a chronic procrastinator, I tend to brag a lot about that. Um, but anyway, finally got it done, getting my license four days before my 18th birthday. So, And I did it on the snowiest day of the year so far. So that, that wasn't all that fun. But learned a thing or two, passed the test. Easy, easy. Lemon squeezy. All right, let's keep going. Um, you don't need anything fancy to start out. Craigslist and Facebook, you can get pretty cheap. That's right, man. Opportunity out there. You know, I've actually sold a mower through Craigslist. Those of you guys who have been watching for a while, you guys know that <laughs> I actually talked about it on the show. I, I had a 42-inch uh, Craftsman LT2000. It's 2014. 2014, nothing wrong with it. Great mower. But the only thing I didn't like about it is how slow it was. It's... A common problem with a lot of residential mowers, which I do use, I use a residential John Deere uh, 2004, which I love that because of the speed and the quality, 48 inch uh, deck width, and it goes like 7 miles an hour, so I knock lawns out like that. But with the newer models, what I don't like about the new residential mowers is that they go like 3 miles an hour, and when you're running a business like me, not the best thing. So if you could find an older mower that's in really good shape, like this one, which I inherited from family, you're set. Now, that's not to bash any of the new, newer pieces of equipment out there. I'm just saying, if you want speed on your side and you're looking for something affordable, then see if you could find something older. Because with a lot of the newer residential tractors, while they're good and all, they don't go that fast. Aiden, now's not the time to brag. <clears throat> but yeah, Aiden did suggest me selling it on Craigslist. Um, what's the easy way to remove weeds on some of my customer lawns? Um, Schneider, this is a really great question. Now, I'm actually going to be partnering up, possibly, it's not final yet, but possibly partnering up with a brand that I really love that revolves around this specific purpose and a little bit broader too so stay tuned for that but anyway just to give you a hint at it I recommend you mulch it up with your mower if you can if it's a small amount or if you have like piles and piles and piles of leaves on your lawn to a point where you walk on the lawn you got like thick piles or like inches worth of leaves on there then my biggest recommendation to you would be would be obviously do not mulch it it's going to be messy bag it up or you can rake everything up in a pile and dispose of it somewhere maybe in the garbage dump it behind your house in the easement if you can do that like I do um, but uh, yeah it's a good way to do it really depends on the severity that's all I always tell my customers the best compliment is a referral to a friend that's right <clears throat> agree with you there uh, you can go pub now that's right man <clears throat> congrats now we can rent a car when you come here <laughs> yeah man by the way I am going to go see Aiden I'm done hiding it alright those of you guys who want to know what's going on I will be going to Aiden's house next June stay tuned for that we, we got some that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to tell you what we're doing over there because we got all sorts of fun stuff planned. <clears throat> all right. What up, Jake? When is the best time to winterize the lawn? Uh, have Scott step four just itching to drop. Uh, Steve Z, as I mentioned, as you're going to hear me mention in this video coming out Monday, just to quickly summarize, 
Um, from this point forward, if you're at six weeks, then what I recommend after that, if you're on the granular program, like I am, traditional granular, whether you're using Carbon X or Scott's Four Step, um, my biggest recommendation to you would be after that, continue applying nitrogen every four weeks. The highest you can go is three quarter pound. At this point, if you want to go a little lower than that, maybe like a half pound or 0.6, you can do that. But if you want to go really crazy, 0.75, stock that low enough for next year. So from there, just keep applying every four weeks. And then you probably want to do that till about Thanksgiving at the latest, because that's typically when temperatures are going to drop. But based on the unusual weather we've been having, it's been unseasonably cool for this time of year. And on top of that, also unseasonably warm for September. So the temperatures have just been like this, and it's confusing the heck out of the plants. So just play it by ear, see how the weather goes. If you get a snow within the next couple of days or so and the cool temperatures reside, then just call it done, save it for next season. You can use it as a starter. How did you get to know all the lawn care facts? Well, Chase, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Passion, passion, dedication. When, when I was introduced to lawn care, this was one thing where I was like, man, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to learn what I can about it. So I use the resources available to me. I, I, I research, I, I read books, sometimes audio books, I listen to podcasts, I listen to all sorts of stuff, right? Probably lied about the book part. I don't read a whole lot of books, but I do listen to audio books here and there. Um, some good podcasts out there. Just one of them I used to love in particular was uh, Florida Gardening with uh, Mark Govan, but I heard that he recently passed away, so may he rest in peace. I loved his show because he had a lot of uh, influencers on in the space. He had uh, fertilizer manufacturers, gardeners, tree, tree suppliers, all sorts of stuff, right? It's just cool stuff to listen to. There's actually this one that I was listening to. It's called, honestly, Frankly Said or something. I don't know. I'll have to... I have to look. I have to look below and link back to it. But anyway, it's to be frank. I think it is. Anyway, I'll I'll get back to you on that. But I listen to a lot of podcasts. I a lot of audio books. I read articles. I research. That's what I do. I just I research. When you want to learn something, what do you do? Research. That's it. Oh. Yeah, Aiden, thanks for teaching me that. Before you taught me that, I used to cram seven hours of editing into one night. It wasn't fun. It's up till two in the morning, only slept three hours. Jake, you need a hydro walk behind and never look back. Bought my 52 Skag, 1800, 10 years ago, still strong. Pool man, I'm going to be honest with you right now. Here's what I'm trying to do. So, when I, was, when I go to GIE, one of the pitches that Alan and I have been given companies, or that I've been given companies, is the fact that I'm an 18-year-old entrepreneur, have my own business, looking to take it to the next level next year. So I'm going to use that pitch to try and score something. I'm trying to get a commercial mower. I'm not, I'm not trying to, I'm, I don't know if they're going to give me one, but definitely a free demo or something. Or maybe I'll, I'll get maybe bigger potential with the residential. Like, couple companies in particular that I had my eye on. Cub Cadet, Snapper, Simplicity, uh, Greenworks Commercial Mowers. Those are really cool. I got to say, one thing I like about Greenworks, and you guys who watched my GIE video, is they make like really high quality commercial equipment. They make mowers, trimmers, blowers, all of that. And it's like commercial grade and it's super quiet, no gas. Freaking awesome. I hope to get my hands on one of those and use them on my customer lawns because at GIE, while you do get to drive them around, you really don't get to see how they cut. So that's really what's going to determine it for me. I want to see how these mowers are going to cut. Massport, yes, RVA, that's another one. I, I see a ton of opportunity with them. Massport, for those of you guys who don't know, they're a commercial residential uh, mower manufacturer. They were also at the GIE. Uh, we did pitch the idea that I am an entrepreneur running my business and that I also have a YouTube channel. And... I think they're down to do something. I don't, I don't have all the details finalized yet, but when I do, I'll get back to you and let you guys know. But I'm not, I'm not trying to spend money. 
especially with the reach I have. Listen, you guys could say whatever you want. I don't care. You could say I'm a sellout. You could say that I'm trying to get free stuff, right? You could say that I'm the most selfish person on earth. <clears throat> I don't care. You know why? Because I know if you guys were in my shoes, if you had the reach I had, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but if you had the reach I had, you would take advantage of it. Guarantee it. You would take advantage of it and see what opportunities you can get. And that's what I'm doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. That's what justifies me trying to get free stuff. <sighs> why Bravo? Yeah, that's another good one. What, why Bravo? But they're more commercially geared. That's what I think. Like, I think they're priced more towards homeowners. I don't know. I haven't checked. But, they're, but based on what I heard from Brian over there, I, I believe he's the marketing guy. I don't know, I'll have to look at that, but after talking to Brian over there, he did tell me that uh, they do appeal to both commercial and residential with their uh, commercial 21 and 25 inch mowers, so I did talk with them, there might be something there, but we'll have to follow up and see, I just don't know yet. Yes, yes, Striper Man, Frank Ross, frankly speaking, that's the podcast, another great one. Uh, that guy is out of Nebraska, I believe, or I Iowa, Nebraska. Probably Nebraska, I think it is. I don't remember all the details, but uh, Frank Ross, yes, frankly speaking. Thanks, Ryan Nor, for the recommendation, by the way, bud. Uh, Jake, final height cut, three inches, turf type tall fescue. Yes, dead on crack, brother. You want to take it down from four to three. And then when you get to spring, opposite three to four as you progress to summer. All right. Do you play any sports? Uh, Chase Crawford, no, I do not. In fact, I used to, though. I used to be in the Junior Golf League uh, for a country club that my grandma used to work at. Did that for like five years, and then, I don't know, I, life got in the way, and I just stopped playing. But... I, I do currently play an instrument. I'm in the jazz band at my high school. I play alto saxophone. And I gotta say, man, soloing with an alto, it's fun. Try it. If you fail, so be it. Keep on trying. That's right, man. You got it. Love the cut of my skag. Pool man. That's another one. I'll, I'll have to see if we can do something. But that's another thing I want to talk to you guys about. So next year is going to be a little different. I'm going to keep doing DIY videos, so I don't want you guys to worry. We're going to keep doing that. Lawn fires isn't going away. You don't have to worry about that. But I just want you to know that there's also going to be more business-related type videos. Because of the agreements that I'm going to be taking on next year, um, which, by the way, more details on that coming soon when that's finalized. I am going to make, be making more videos about my business and what it's like for me running my business. But just know that I'm going to keep it 50-50 here, okay? Because I got a really, because a majority of you guys I know are DIYers and your demographic is typically going to be 25 to 40. And I also got some lawn kids in here that, um, that aspire to be uh, business owners someday and I, I want to give those guys some encouragement too you know I've been I've been catering to DIY for quite some time and that's never gonna change I'm gonna keep doing that but I just want you guys to know that I'm probably going to be doing half the amount I'm gonna be doing more more business type stuff next year so just know DIY not going anywhere we're still gonna be doing project lawns we're still gonna be doing tons of videos tons of stuff cooking for next year but on top of that, I'm also going to incorporate some business updates in there because I know a lot of you guys have asked me about that. And now that I'm in a position where I can actually do that, I got my truck coming. I'm going to be driving. We're going to be growing big. I really want to document that progress. So that will be coming up soon. Okay. Jake, your local dealer should let you demo a few different models if you ask them. That's how I bought mine. I demoed four different mowers over a month. And if you can get a freebie, heck yeah, take it. I will, man. Want to see. 
why why quality of this feed is crap at 1080? I'll tell you why. Because I'm streaming off my phone and the uh, the bandwidth is terrible. Nothing I could do about it. Got to deal with it. Can't beat the versatility of a walk behind. You should see the hills I mow with it. Yeah, man. I'll tell you what. Walk behinds come in handy. Play hockey and piano. Dude, that's awesome. You know, it's kind of funny. You ever seen the movie Happy Gilmore? It's kind of, it's interesting, right? Like, think of you and I as the premise of that movie. Beginning, originally wants to be a hockey player, and then throughout, realizes that he can be a golfer. Two similar sports, different rules, but that's what I feel like here. And I, if you haven't seen that, forgive me, but I'm just having a little fun with my movie references here. I'm sure RVA knows, knows that. Happy Gilmore, he's like, uh, what was he like in the beginning? He's like, when I got out of high school, I had a lot of different jobs. I was a road worker, <laughs> janitor, <laughs> security guard, <laughs> gas station attendant, <laughs> and a plumber. I apologize. I'm late to the party. How's the lawn looking this fall? I didn't have much help from Mother Nature, not much rain until this past week, and the lawn suffered a bit more than usual. And Mace, um, I'm late to the party. How's the lawn looking this fall? It's looking pretty good. I'll be it, though. The growth is slowing down tremendously because of the cooler temperatures and the shorter days. And that's, that's just natural around here. That's, that's what happens. No way to fight it. Nails his boss in the head, yeah. Price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> Great movie. He's like, the price is wrong, bitch. <laughs> okay. What's the best temperature to winterize your lawn? Uh, Nadu. This one is actually a little different. Um, the latest I recommend you go is to Thanksgiving. So apply nitrogen, three quarter pound at most every four weeks, all the way up until Thanksgiving at the latest. Once you get to Thanksgiving, then I suggest you stop, especially if you live in an area like I do in the Midwest, uh, Indiana, Illinois type area, um, Northwest area. This is typically when things are gonna slow down and start getting cold after Thanksgiving. So I don't really think anything's going to be growing by then. So I'd assume that after Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving at the latest, let that be your time frame. If it does go any later, then you could follow up with me and we could talk something else through. All right, we've got one more minute and then i got to sign off here. Man, that's crazy. Saw it in the theaters in middle school. I'll tell you what, I wish I could have seen that in theaters. Speaking of which, real quick, um, I used to play, after the junior league, for, for a season, I actually played um, at my local country club up here. I'm sure those of you guys who live in Indiana here, you guys know Yuki, Yuki Country Club. It's like a high-end type of country club. They got pool, all that stuff. Um, I used to play there, and one year they actually had a screening for Happy Gilmore. They had a, it was just, it was just fun. It was a fun idea. You know, you bring all the kids who played on the league, adults, whatever. It's kind of like a drive-in movie type thing. They had Happy Gilmore playing. Sadly, I didn't go because I wanted to use, I wanted to use my grandma's riding mower so bad um, because I was, I was so stubborn. I, I missed out on that. It would have been a good time, but, oops, I don't know why I did that, but anyway, Probably would have been fun, but next time if they ever do that again, I'm definitely going. Adam Sandler rocks. It's right. You know what another movie I like is? You don't mess with Zohan. It's a great one. And you know what's funny? It's funny. I don't want to get religious or anything, but my uh, on my my dad's side of the family, his stepfather is actually Lebanese. So if, he, if anybody's ever seen the Zohan movie uh, with Adam Sandler, you'll understand what I'm talking about. It's the uh, Palestines and the uh, Iraqis, and they're 
they're in the war, and then Adam Sandler's the guy that's like, hey, you know, I've had enough of this fighting. I want to go to America and pursue my dream of cutting hair, right? If you've seen it, you guys know it's funny. Okay. When's the best time to put Grub Killer down? When's the best time to put Grub Killer down? Well, if you live where I do, Jocelyn, um, that would probably be early June. That's when that's typically when the rain is going to go down and the temperature is going to go up. And because of that, you want to start thinking about preventing grubs before they become a problem. Take advantage of that time period while you can. Now, I've actually done a couple of videos on this. In fact, Aiden, if you could link below to my, uh, if you could link below to my latest video that I did on the channel last year about grubs in the lawn, that would be much appreciated, brother. I'll answer a couple more and then we'll get off here. 7:35. 7.35 is my end day, is my end time. No, no, no sooner than that, no later. 7.35, three more minutes, and then we're getting off. That's it. Um, are you going to do snow removal this winter? M. Mace, I'm not, I'm not going to have a plow or anything, but I do have some customers in the neighborhood. Um, I do have some customers in the neighborhood that have been asking me about it, and I told them simply, yes, I'll... I'll clear your snow for you because I do have that dual stage Craftsman snow thrower, so I'm going to take advantage of that. Go up the street with my trailer, truck, see if I can pick up some driveways, man. Easy money. But it's a lot of commitment if we get a really bad winter. If we get a really bad winter going into January when I'm going to school, then i got to figure out how I'm, how I'm going to make that work. Because I know people want to have their driveways cleared in the morning before they go to work. So I'd have to get up like super early, like 5 o'clock. Maybe before that. Thanks, Aiden. Appreciate it. Jake, late to the party. What have I missed? Not much, Alan. Alex, just the usual. Fire and a good conversation with everyone. Ah, that's great. Super Trooper parody. You know what, RVA? That's another great movie. I love the uh, I love the big guy. What's his name? Kind of looks like a woodchuck. Has a uh, big round head. Buzz cut. Crew cut. If it snowed, do you think you'd have off? Yeah, but only to a certain extent. If the roads don't freeze... Or even better, if the roads freeze, but not to a certain extent, they make us go. That's how the school corporation is around here. They're, I don't know, their their policies are weird around here. But I'm not going to get into that. What's that? Okay, Calvin. Thank you, Aiden, for holding that back. But Calvin, take it easy. This is a family-friendly show, man. Keep it real. Keep it clean. Uh, getting the kids and dogs soon. Not looking forward to the dogs' urine spots in the backyard. Any recommendations to prevent or repair? This is a great question. I get this a lot. And I'll probably do a video on it at some point. Actually, you know what? You guys are in luck because I was at my big project lawn. You guys know the Basaga house I'm doing. Um, Rich Basaga, that guy. Um, it's a collaboration I did with Alan last year, that big 30,000 square foot uh, woodland property. And I actually shot a, a video over there about the, the last application to put the lawn to bed for winter because let's, let's be honest, it's a big lawn. I'm probably not going to go back there anytime soon. So we'll just call that the last application will be good. Especially when you'll see in that video, that lawn didn't have a lot of nitrogen this year and it looked beautiful like it adapted nicely so with the small amount I gave it I'm going to see a big difference anyway when I was there I shot some video I was shooting some video with uh, Rich's son Max you guys know Max he's a recurring uh, he's a recurring uh, what, what's the word for him he's a recurring character in this project he comes back every time he's Really cool, bright-minded kid. Him and I were walking around the lawn, taking a look at it, doing a little preliminary inspection before the application. And we actually did find an area where the dogs, where his dog, because they have a golden retriever, has been 
peeing and pooping constantly. And because of that, it's actually been wreaking havoc. So to get back to what you're talking about, when a dog pees very little, it's kind of like synthetic fertilizer. When a dog pees very little, it actually fertilizes the lawn, thus leaving a darker green patch in the middle. Whereas if you overdo it, maybe the dog has a bigger bladder and it's going to pee more in one sitting, think of it like synthetic fertilizer again. You're going to burn the area out. You're not going to kill it necessarily, but you're going to burn it. So what I would recommend to you in this situation, there are pills you can give to your dogs. Obviously wouldn't recommend that. But what I would recommend you do is you close off a small area of your lawn. Just sacrifice a small area. Maybe you have an area underneath your deck. Maybe you have an area on the side of the house. Maybe you have an area right by your barbecue. I don't know what you're dealing with. But all I'd recommend to you is maybe, maybe take a small 500 square foot, 15, whatever you want to do. Take a small section of your lawn, sacrifice it, gate it off, and let that be for the dog to do its business. And then that way the rest of the lawn can be for you and you won't have to deal with that issue any longer. Now what I would recommend for you if you do have any areas in the lawn you do have any areas in the lawn that are uh, that did suffer from some of the pee damage because I've had that happen when my when my Boston was around my dog um, who passed away last year when she was around um, she used to she used to pee a lot by the stairs here especially in the winter time because you know cold don't expect the dog to go far she goes close walks right back in and when she did that came the spring tons of dead areas right so what I would recommend to you as you're coming into spring here, take advantage of the fact that we're getting more heat in the forecast. And then once we get in there, then put some dethatch on it. You guys know that if there's one thing that I represent a lot here on the channel, it's the Green County Next products. And my one of my favorite products in particular for this sole reason is the dethatch. For those of you guys who don't know what dethatch is, it's a combination of molasses and a couple other goodies. And basically what it's going to do is it's going to increase microbial activity. It's going to kick the microbe activity up, which is then going to speed up the decomposition of that thatch and put it back down into the ground where it can actually be used as a food source to support the new growth that's going to come in and fill in that bare spot. And then once you've done that, come back about a month later and hit those areas with RGS and aerate. And then if you want, you can also put some seed in those areas if you want, if you have small areas that are somewhat manageable to keep wet, uh, especially in the springtime, shouldn't be a problem. You get all that rain. Go ahead and put some seed in there. Put some RGS and aerate on that. The aerate will break down, um, making room for root penetration. The RGS is going to push the root penetration. And because of that, I promise you, within six to eight weeks at most, you can have those areas looking really good. So I hope that was helpful. If it was, glad I helped you. Let's continue on here. By the way, Aiden, I'm, I might go a little bit here. If you want to get off, that's fine. How do you start your year? Do you send out letters or call clients to see if they want you for the year? Well, Terry Davis, here's what I do. I really don't hand out a whole lot of flyers or business cards anymore. But what I do is I text all my existing clients um, like, hey, this is Jacob, uh, Jacob's Lawn Service, whatever your name is, right? No, not to the customer, whatever your service name is, right? In my case, Jake's Lawn Service. Um, I'm texting you in regards to the 2018 lawn season. Are you still interested in having me back? And then from there, they get back to me and tell me whether they want me or not. And then on top of that, some of them actually um, talk about me over the winter. Like, hey, if you want, I'll, I'll, I'll mention you to this person, get you some more customers. Absolutely, man, let's do it. I've gotten a couple of, I've gotten and lost a couple of customers that way. Now, losing the customers was my fault because I actually had this, I'm going to be honest with you, I had this one elderly couple uh, that I maintained for a good season, right? Very, they were very down to earth people, love them, hoping I can get them back. But I think the mistake I made is that, I texted everybody, right? And they are an older couple. They've been around for a while. And I don't even think they own a cell phone. I think they have I have they have landlines, right? So I go to text the uh, the landline on my phone, forgetting that they didn't have a cell phone, and they never got my text message and within a month they hired another company. 
So that was bad planning, bad um that was that was just bad on my part, but now I learned, you know, next time you next time So here's the lesson I learned there. The next time you want to communicate with customers, look at how they're willing to communicate. If it's an older couple, probably give them a phone call. If it's a newer couple, like maybe a generation X, you can probably get away with a text message mostly, right? And if it's a really young guy, like in their 30s, Generation Y, I think that is. Or what, what do they call those? What do they call? What do they call those who are 30 now? Millennials, I think. Millennials, you could definitely text them all day long, because a lot of them don't want to talk to people, which I understand. I'm younger than millennials, and I'm not a big fan of talking. Anything I can do without interacting to a human being, I'm all about. But anyway, I learned. Right? You live, you learn, and then you die. That's how life works. A little chilly for it now. That's right. <laughs> what do you think about Gluten 8 OLP liquid pre-emergent? Google user, I have never used it. Can't speak on it. Lazy Lawns. What's up, brother? Hey. Um, by the way, I will have my video on Monday, and I will be mentioning the campaign. I don't know if you can see, but uh, my fuzz stash is starting to come in. That's right, fuzz stash. Fuzz stash is starting to come in. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah, fuzz stash is starting to come in. Video will be out on that Monday. Let's see how this goes, because before this, I didn't shave my facial hair for two weeks, so it got really long, and so this... This section right here is going to go six weeks without being shaved. This ought to be fun. Fuzz stash. Me and Ryan Norman, we're part of the Fuzz stash club. Thank you. I do recommend checking it out. It's all natural and worked for me in 2019. I will. Thank you for the recommendation, Google. Google user. Can't call you Google because... Don't want to get Google upset. All right, a couple more and then we'll get off here. A dog, what's up, brother? How you doing? Welcome to the show. All right, I'll tell you what. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock and I'm getting off here. Eight o'clock. I know I said seven thirty-five. Eight o'clock. I'm done. All right, that's it. Aiden, you can even text me and tell me at eight o'clock. Jake, get off. You're done, right? Because I have a tendency to keep going. Like I, lo I love the interaction, but I got to stop. I got things I got to do. I got to get to bed at a reasonable hour. All that stuff. So, Aiden, I hold you. I'll hold you to it. By the way, Aiden, if you want, you can leave now too. You don't have to stick around, but just, just saying. If you want, send me a text. Text me and tell me that uh, I need to get off. I will listen. Let's put some, uh... What's up, Gil? Mm hey, -hmm. I say it. Cats in the hallway. What's up, buddy? Yeah. I'll be right with you. Real quick, let me show you what's going on. Hopefully the Wi-Fi won't cut out. If it does, I really don't care. I'm already going over time anyway. Look at it. Um, don't worry, buddy. It's just me. It's just me. Oh, oh, he's getting a little tense. Don't want to make him mad. Look at him. Watch. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. You're a good guy. Yeah. Watch this. Let's see if we can get him to do it. Oh, 
he's getting old. Look at him. Oh, yeah. He's like, that feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Aw, Gail. This is my buddy right here. Tell you what, if you weren't such a scaredy cat, no pun intended, I'd pick you up. It's not that he's a scaredy cat, it's that he just doesn't trust certain people. Like for me, some reason, this cat doesn't trust me at all to hold him. But Silverback, he'll let Silverback hold him no problem. The least he'll let me do to him is freaking give him a belly rub. Oh yeah, by the way. There's the, uh, there's the fuzz stash update, day one. You can see, barely noticeable, but can't wait to see how this turns out. All right, buddy. Look at him. He's like, where, where are you going? Where? <laughs> He's like, where are you going? That's great. All right, let's, let's wrap this up. A couple more, like I said, we're going to go till 8 o'clock. I'm going to go till 8 o'clock. And then for real, I got to get off here. I got stuff to do. that to happen. Plug that back in. How about a basement tour? Hopefully finishing mine next year, man. You know what? I would show it to you tonight, but it's a real mess. And I'm not embarrassing myself on camera. Because I am ashamed at how messed, messed up this place is. But, uh, due to the change in plans last minute, I really didn't have a whole lot of time. Like I said, originally I was going to have my audio tech over tonight. And we were going to... You guys know last week's episode was so crisp. The picture was awesome. But... Something came up, you couldn't be here. This didn't work out. But I want to see it through. I guarantee that. It's it's an asset. Let's just say right now, what he did for me last week, Jonathan, was an ass was really crucial asset. He brought my quality up and I had zero auction. I don't know what it looks like on your end, but this is off my mobile phone. I get a lot of complaints about how it looks sometimes, about how the phone's pixelated and how the movement's all glitchy because the bandwidth sucks, all sorts of stuff, right? But uh, I'm sure he'll be back here next week. If not, then we're just going to keep doing it on the mobile phone until I come up with something better. What I'm thinking about doing, if I can't get him back here, is I'm just going to run my webcam over my wall right here because the ceiling's not finished out here. Hook it up right here and then have OBS going in my room. And then I could just sit at the bar by the fire. Keep it real, you know? But we'll have to see. Excuse me a minute. Okay, sorry about that. Drank a lot of water. Oop. It's okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Clear off now. That's funny. 
Sorry about that. I had a lot of water for the stream. Sorry about that. Holy large pixels back, man. It's a cat. It's a cat that are always mad. <laughs> Super troopers, right meow. <laughs> I did wash my hands, dude. Come on. For real, beef or chicken? That's a tough one. Maybe chicken. You put the right seasoning on there, juice it up. Okay, uh, Shane Mitchell, I have blown leaves, I have blown my leaves twice a week, how much damage does it cause to the lawn, if any? Echo PB8010, um, okay, I have to blow my leaves twice a week, how much damage does it cause to the lawn? Well, assuming that you're doing it when the temperatures are warmer and the ground is soft, meaning when you walk on it, it doesn't feel hard or compacted or frozen or anything like that. Then you should be fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Can Jake even drink yet? That's a good question, Lazy Lawns. Um, the answer is a big N-O. I still got a couple more years to go. But when I get there, I will gladly go sing karaoke with Alan, John, and all of them at GIE Expo uh, 2024, I think. Yeah, 20, 2024. 2023, actually. You're the man. I think I'll sleep better. All right, man. You'll be good. Have a great week. I thought he was going to fetch a whiskey. You guys are funny. Born in eighty three. Nice. or 19 um a dog i'm 17 i'm going to be 18 in four days five days now it's four days now screw it i'm going to be i'm going to be 18 years old wednesday november 6th 2019 can't wait hoping maybe i'll maybe uh silverback will take me out to a uh, steak dinner Big one eight, yeah, man. It's exciting. <laughs> That's funny. Twice my age. That's great. Time flies, my friend. Enjoy the ride. I will, man. I'm enjoying it right now. You know how I enjoy it? I do what I like. Unlike most kids nowadays, they just work for money, and they work, work themselves to death, and then they work all them lives, all their lives, and work just becomes work to them. Whereas me, I'm trying to make work what I live for. That's what I'm trying to do. I mean, yeah, I try to have fun every now and then, but... As long as I'm passionate about what I do, and the fact that I also get to do something very unique and very cool and help you guys out and share my experience as a business owner and all this stuff, it's just awesome. That's what I like about this. Whatever happened to your truck, is it still at your Graham's house? No, it's at my neighbor's now. Going to get it tomorrow. 
doing great things. Keep doing what you do, and you will go far. It's right, man. Keep my eyes up. All right. A couple more. Like I said, 8 p.m., and I'm off. So if you have any questions, put them in there. And then that's it. Then we're done. get off here so uh, I'm out thanks for taking the time chat you later have a good weekend thanks for all you do you're welcome well, it looks like we're uh oh yeah real quick before I go I want to go ahead and let you guys know what's gonna be happening tomorrow so I'm getting my truck back tomorrow me and my neighbor I'm sure you guys have uh, caught them in an episode or two. Come by and drop wood in my uh, fire pit outside. Him, Silverback, and I, we're going to this tree farm where we're going to get all this free wood. We're going to stock up the back of the Suburban, my entire trailer. We're, we're, when I say we're going to get wood, I mean we're getting wood. Like, we're bringing home this entire wall right here, where it's usually just a stack. It's going to be full. Like, we're bringing home tons of wood and we're going to stock it right here so it can dry out over the winter and there will be plenty of episodes of lawn fires to come my dog is named jake that's funny that's great you know you want to know what my dog's name was nipper that's funny she was a boston terrier and if you guys know what a boston looks like they got like those uh little pushback noses, the big eyes, it's just, I once had my neighbor look at, look at my dog and say, Jake, you're so unusual. Every time I hear that, every time I, I think of that, it's so funny because it's so true with the Boston. That's right, put the lawn on your bed, put the full tummy. That's right. All right, guys. Well, it's 8 o'clock, so you know what that means. That's the end of the show. I want to thank all of you guys for coming in here. And as always, big thanks to Aiden for moderating for me. I know he wasn't in here for the full time. He had stuff to do now. Uh, but because of that, because of that, he couldn't get in here for the full thing. But I appreciate him stopping in here for a couple of minutes and uh, uh, assisting me in some of the links. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get off here. I'm Jake the Long Kid. Thank all, thanks to all of you guys for supporting me in everything I do. I wouldn't be able to keep going without you. It means a lot to me. So with that, I'm Jake the Lawn Kid. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. If I don't see you guys next time, your lawn is going to be dominated. See you later. Ugh.